Welcome to the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, CIPO's educational video series called IP Protection Abroad, Leveraging IP in New Markets. Part 3. Learn about IP in your target countries. In this video, we'll discuss ways to learn about intellectual property, or IP, in your target countries abroad. This is a preparatory step before you apply for the formal IP rights. But before we start, let's explain what we mean by target countries. IP rights are territorial. A Canadian patent, trademark, or industrial design won't give you any protection abroad. Even if the target market for a business is limited to Canada, there's a chance that some protection abroad will be useful in the long term. Businesses should consider protecting their IP in the jurisdictions where they plan to discuss, display, sell, or manufacture their products or services. Furthermore, it's a good idea to also seek IP protection in places where it's possible that someone else will copy, manufacture, or import these products and services. A formal IP right can be critical to preventing knockoffs or counterfeit products from moving through customs. We'll explain shortly what to look for specifically as you learn about IP in your target countries. It's important to look specifically for IP rights in your target country. If someone already owns the IP there, it could limit or even prevent you from formally protecting your IP in both your home country and your target country. Therefore, investigate. Is anyone using your trademark or a similar one? If so, are they using the same goods and services as you? Is there a risk that your trademark is too similar to something that already exists? Are these IP rights maintained? For example, have the maintenance fees been paid for patents or has the trademark been renewed? Let me also stress that this is an initial search only. Let an IP professional verify and complement your search. Can you guide people to some good places online where this information is available? Yes. In our previous video series on IP strategy, specifically the video about how to do an external IP audit, we showed how to search for others' IP rights. This is the kind of search where you look at your competitors, regardless of where their IP is protected. A good way to start identifying your target countries is to look at your competitors and where they protect their IP. Even if you already have an idea of what kind of IP you have, you may be able to identify additional jurisdictions where similar patents, trademarks, and industrial designs are commonly protected around the world. Check out the How to Do an External Intellectual Property Audit video on SIPO's YouTube channel for examples of how to search for trademarks, patents, and industrial designs at www.wipo.int forward slash reference. You can find the link to both this video and the World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO, website in the video description. After step one, you should have a good understanding of where you need to protect your IP going forward. Let's now proceed with step two, learn about IP regulations in these countries. IP rights are subject to local regulations, procedures, and laws. To make the best use of your time with your IP professional, Develop a basic understanding of some of the IP regulations, procedures, offices, fees, and best practices to protect your IP in specific countries. We discussed some common mistakes in an earlier video, but they deserve to be repeated. Some jurisdictions, but not all, have something called a grace period. This is a period that some countries allow between the time an invention or design is disclosed publicly, for example, in a scientific publication, a seminar, or conference, and the time the application for IP rights is filed. If this period is allowed, there may be differences from country to country in how long it lasts and what's considered a disclosure or what's authorized or not. Some countries also have more detailed classes for trademark products and services. And some countries don't have any so-called use requirements to file for trademarks, so anyone can file for a trademark. And finally, other countries, including Canada, have common law jurisdictions, which means that someone may have trademark rights they can enforce without first having to register the trademark with the IP office. This means that you won't be able to find all relevant trademarks in a database containing registered trademarks. Let's look at another useful place to learn about IP. When you're looking for IP information specific to a country, WIPO's country profile web pages are a really good place to start. Visit www.wipo.int 
directory slash en. From this page, select and open the WIPO country profile page for your selected country. On the country profile page, you'll find the contact information of the local IP office, legal information, IP statistics, innovation rankings, and much, much more. From the country profile page, you can also find out if a country is a signatory to the international filing treaties like the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the Madrid Protocol, and the Hague Agreement, which we'll discuss later. To give you an idea of how this page works, let's look at the country profile for Canada. At the very top of the page, a link to the IP office. The following section contains links to pages where you can learn more about our Canadian IP laws, which international treaties we're a member of, statistics, innovation rankings, and more. The National IP Laws and Regulations link take you to WIPOLEX, a global database that provides free access to legal information on IP. This information can be hard to understand and is best interpreted together with an IP professional. Canada's country profile also has links to pages describing our IP office's role in international applications for patents, trademarks, and industrial design rights, and links to search results for these various IP rights in Canada. So, when you select, for example, National Patent Collection, you actually get the search results from Patent Scope for patents in Canada only. Finally, in the IP in Action section, you can learn more about the IP policies from national universities and research institutions and find links to various publications and initiatives related to IP rights in Canada. Depending on the country profile that you're exploring, this section may also contain links to videos with more information as well as patents and IP landscape reports. There is simply an amazing amount of information available here for free. So now that we know where to look for information, let's take a closer look at the things that can be useful to investigate. As you're preparing to meet with an IP professional, also try to find out a few things. First, determine what the regional IP laws cover and if there are any exclusions to what you can protect. There may also be differences when it comes to what's eligible for IP protection, such as biological matter and software. Find out if you're required to be represented by a certified local IP practitioner, such as a nationally registered agent. In some jurisdictions, unless you have a registered business entity in that jurisdiction, only an authorized professional such as a local lawyer or IP agent can represent you and manage your filings. Determine what languages you may use to file your application. Finally, look into the various fees and how to pay them, as well as any time limits for filing for protection, paying fees, and other deadlines. By now you know that each country has its own sets of IP laws. These laws must be followed in the formal IP protection process. Details about them are available on WIPO's website. You can also learn more about IP rights and organizations in CEPO's guides for protecting IP in a range of countries. To learn more about IP rights for your destination, make sure to visit our web pages. Visit canada.ca slash export IP for links to information about searching for IP rights, local IP offices, local regulations, and more. These are just examples of where to find IP data. Since IP rights are legal, understanding what's protected can be really important. That's why an IP professional can be of great help. These experts often have experience in searching and drafting IP documents and may have access to advanced tools that can identify, analyze, and present the data in ways that make it easier to understand. Therefore, it's often recommended to seek the help of a professional. This could be an IP professional, someone with extensive experience offering their advice as a service. It could also be an IP agent who has passed a qualifying exam and is entitled to act on your behalf with SIPO. Finally, you could choose an IP lawyer who is a qualified lawyer with specialization in IP law and related legal matters. There are links to search engines to registered patent and trademark agents and other IP professionals on the screen and in the description in this video. A range of free resources are available to you as you do your research. The full links are listed in the description of this video. This concludes the video describing how you can learn about IP in your target countries. It's important that you do your research and go over the results with an IP professional before you apply for IP rights abroad. Watch our next video to learn about the systems available to you to apply for IP rights abroad.